Hi, and uh, welcome to Comics Experiences Graphic Novel Month Club for kids. Yay, kids. Woo! Uh, this is for our November book, uh, which is Edison Beaker Creature Seeker, which is my favorite title of any book we've had so far. I just, I like saying it, Edison Beaker Creature Seeker. Love it. Yeah. Um, and with us uh, on video, we have Frank Camuso. Hello, Frank. Hello, Brian. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for, for, for being here. Uh, my first question I always is, is why comics? What is it about comics that speaks to you? Why is that the art form that you chose to, to make a career and, uh, and build everything on? I've always loved comics. I mean, I, it's, it's kind of how I think, you know, I mean, I, I used to read comics when I was younger, I watched a little bit, but I was reading them when I was really young. I would read, comics in the newspaper, the funnies and things like that. And that's, uh, that's really kind of how I, um, you know, that's, that's really kind of became the basis of how I communicated. I would draw all the time and I started reading comic books and started creating my own comics. And it just, it's natural. I don't, I don't think I, words and pictures are kind of inseparable to me. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I love that. Um, uh what's what's the first comic that you remember drawing like when you were a kid i was i was a huge peanuts fan so yeah. i was you know I mean, and it's deceptively simple too the peanuts are everybody thinks they can draw charlie brown yeah. but it's really hard to draw that big old circle i don't know how schultz did it i really don't i mean it's just for 50 years i mean that was a perfect circle too i mean you, you know and if you don't nail it you'll screw up charlie brown it's just it's it doesn't look like it that's great. Um, did you uh, uh, did you go to? I assume you went to school for art. I did. I went to Syracuse University for illustration. Yeah, and but which could, you know, but you could kind of there was like a pecking order. There was there was fine artists, then there was illustrators, and then there was cartoonists. We were way down. Yeah. Other did they have there. a cartooning program? No, no, no. I did get I did get into SVA, and. Uh, but I'm from upstate New York and they didn't have off campus, um, on campus housing. Right. So that was going to be, it was going to be a little too much. And this was like the early eighties in the lower East side of Manhattan. So sure. it wasn't going to be. it's, a, it's a, a little, little harder back then. Um, yeah. uh, you're, are you, and I, if I read your bio right, you're teaching at, at the same at Syracuse university. Is that right? I do. Yep. And I teach comics. That. That's, that, isn't that super cool that you you went there as a, as a student and, and now you're back and, and teaching the, this thing that you love in the first place? Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's it's it, sometimes I can't believe I'm doing it. I mean, I'll I teach in the spring. I teach a history of comics class, and and I'm like they pay me to talk about comics for two hours. You know, it's just, it's, it's it's pretty great. That's super awesome. That's yeah. super awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, so you you knew like heck early on that you were going to be a cartoonist. That was your. Yeah. All right. That was it. I was yeah. a little bit. There was going to be a little bit of time when I was going to be an astronaut. Yeah. And then there was a little bit of time where I wanted to be a gas station attendant. Okay, that's an odd one. <laughs> that is. Well, I like the smell of gas. That was the thing as a child. Yeah, that's weird. I know. Okay. And then. Uh, and then I think there was a time when I wanted to be a veterinarian, and then, and I learned that not only helping animals, but I was going to have to maybe hurt them too to put them to sleep, and I, that was done. I couldn't do that. Yeah, yeah. So then it was cartoonist, and whether I was going to do a comic strip or like an animated, be an animator or you know do comic books, that was up in the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you, so what was the first time when you tried to draw a comic? What was, what, tell, tell us about that. Well, I was always drawing, you know, but I think I started doing a comic in like a real comic that was printed in high school. So for the, like the student newspaper. Oh, cool. That's super cool. That. Yeah, yeah. 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 And how about, um, how about doing the professional? What was the very first one? Is, was it, I, cause I can't remember if it was, what order they came in, whether it was Nights nice at the Lunch Table or Salem High. Oh, yeah, or, yeah, for yeah. comic books, yeah. I mean, comic books, it was uh, the first one. Well, I, I self-published a book 
in the early aughts called Max Ham Fairy Tale Detective. I, I know the book, yeah. So so I did that and that basically got me the jobs for that got me the auto gig with tune books and then and then Knights of the Lynch Table at Scholastic. Nice, nice. You uh, you won the Eisner, didn't you? Or you got nominated for the Eisner? I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, it, it, the nomination is just as good. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's excellent. <laughs> How did it feel like your first self-published book and getting getting that nomination? Oh, it was pretty amazing. I was I was very I felt very gratified and uh, you know I was just kind of amazed that had 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 reached the people that. I wanted it to reach you know that was the real stunning thing because you know when you're when you're a creator you're kind of doing stuff in this bubble where you're working for yourself and working and you're just seeing it and it's everything's kind of just in one place it's in you, you know and then when you publish it it goes out there and you never know how it's going to land whether people are going to like it or not or you know so it's it's extremely rewarding when when something like that happens where you get nominated or something yeah yeah. That's, great, great. That's really cool. Yeah. So just so you guys, I don't know if we've ever talked about the Eisner Awards. Those are those are the, the awards they give out in comic books, and they're kind of like the Oscars. Um, they're, <laughs> they're no, they really are. They have they have like a fancy dinner really? where people dress up really nice, and it yeah. gets it gets broadcast. I mean, you know, not on television because yeah. you know, not that many people care about comics, but you know, uh, it's still it's a pretty cool a pretty cool thing. It's a uh, it's a it's a significant event. Um, it is. Yeah, yeah. You have to take a bath before you go. Yeah, you do. You do have to take a bath before you go, for sure. Um, so Salem Hyde was first between the, of, of the next things that you did, the next comics you did. Yeah, yeah. And, and Salem Hyde, yep. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, yeah. and now Edison Beaker. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's what's it? What's the what's the process for for pitching a series like this? Like. Are you are are you are you conceiving these as as an individual book? Or are you thinking, oh, I have seven seven books out of this or whatever? You know. No, I mean, you know, they were all pitched as series, so you know they like Salem Hyde was very open ended, and same with Knights. Edison Beaker has an ending, so and I don't think it'll be seven. Right. <laughs> but you know, I think that's. That would be a long time. So. Yeah, yeah. Was it? Was it? Or would be good. <laughs> that's cool. What was it? Uh, was it challenging to pitch a series when you had only just done a single book before? Um, yeah, it was. I mean, but they. It was also when I started. This was about 10, 12 years ago. So, and and I don't think, and they were just. And at that point, the publishers just wanted content. So I don't think, and I could do it. So they're like, yeah, keep it going. Keep it going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's really how it is. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a much different world. There's a, it's a lot more competitive out there, too. Um, exactly. Yeah, especially in, in the kids' space, when you started doing Salem Hyde uh, and Nights at the Lunch Table, I mean, there wasn't a lot of kids' series coming out at that point. Um, no, I mean, I was, it was, for Scholastic, it was... Uh, it was like uh, Raina's, um, you know, Babysitter's Club. There was Amulet from mm -hmm. Kazu, my um, book, and Bone, and like a couple of, I think, Scott uh, um, did Super Pickle or something like oh, that. Yeah, or yeah, yeah, Magic yeah. Pickle. Um, yeah, yeah. Scott Morris did Magic Pickle. Yeah. And, that, and that's about it. There was a couple other ones, but, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a it's a much bigger world now. So when you and I'm just because I'm I'm curious. I, I know the kids probably don't care, but I'm I'm curious when you pitch a series like this now. Now that you have two series behind you, is it is it easier for you? Is it harder for you? Are are more people bidding? Is is it is are the other companies like no? We already did your comic. We don't want your comic anymore. Like how does it work out? Um, it's always uh, well, it's always harder because it's always kind of. I'm always trying to challenge myself, trying to do something I haven't done before. Yeah. So this was really kind of my first hardcore fantasy story. Uh huh. And and that was that was really challenging because I didn't really I didn't realize how many of the rules you have to know going in. Yeah. You know, like, like everyone thinks 
a fantasy store, you can do whatever you want, but you can't. You really actually have to know the rules before you go in. So you have to, all your magic has to have a reason why it works and, and things like that. So all that stuff has to be thought out. So, I mean, it's fun, but it can be really frustrating too. So, how, 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 big for, is, how big is your notes file? Oh, well, hold on. This is the first book. This was the first. So it's just okay. all, it's all just all notes and, you know, just all sorts of stuff like this. Oh, great. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just so a lot of notes, nice. a lot of sketchbooks, you know, yeah. so. How, how long does it take you to conceive something like this to, to put together, you know, the package so you know what you're, when you start drawing that you're going to be able to do it? Like the pre-work, I guess. Well, a lot of it's, you know, you have a, you start with a pitch and the pitch is pretty vague, you know? I mean, it's only about a page or two and you do a page or two of art and that's about it. You send it off and because they know I've done other work in the past so they can see what I've done. Yeah. So I'm not really kind of an, an unknown component. Like if you hadn't done a book before, I think they'd want to see some work up front, like yeah. much more work up front. So I send off the book, I send off the pitch and they buy it on that. And then, you know, and then all of a sudden it comes back and like, all right, now you have to do 160 pages, fill it. And, uh, yeah. but that's the challenge. You, that's what you want to do though. You kind of want to have, at least for me, I want to have it fresh. I want to, it makes it interesting. Well, cause the process takes almost a year. Yeah. So you don't want to, you want to be interesting. You know, if you, if you had it all planned out and knew exactly what was going to happen, I think it'd get boring after a while. Sure, sure. Yeah, a lot of cartoonists say that say that very thing to us that the, the spontaneity of just drawing is what makes it fun. Yeah. Challenging, but fun as well. Um, yeah, totally um, uh, so speaking of that, I mean, how do you? What's what's your what's your physical work process? You work pen and paper. You work digital. I used to work pen and paper. Now I work entirely digital, just for okay. just for production. It just it's. You know, it's just a lot easier to yeah. get, get the work done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how, how fast do you work? Uh, what's your output? I'm pretty fast. Um, it depends. You know, I for pencils, maybe a couple, two or three pages a day. You know, my work isn't that detailed, you know, so it's not like, it's not like I'm Jim Lee or somebody. Right. You know, and I'm really having to obey the rules of like um, – anatomy and perspective, you know, because my stuff is very humorous. I can yeah. kind of, you know, I kind of break the rules and stretch things a little bit. So yeah. Yeah. and inking's about the same and coloring. I can, and coloring, I can usually do about four or five pages a day. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, so that's a, seems pretty, it's pretty fast to me. Yeah. It's a slog. But, yeah. 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 Well, when you got to do 160 pages, it's, it, it's yeah. there. Um, I want to, I want to go to you guys. Uh, Actually, the first thing I wanted to ask you guys is, did you guys like this? Well, obviously you did because yeah, you showed yeah, it to me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was good, right? It was yeah, really good and yeah. funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who has a question for Frank? You always have the first question. Um, so, um, when, um, so when, uh, um, so Mabob, is that mm -hmm. like her real name or is that just like, what people call her because her store thing is called Thingamabobs, or it's like Mabob. Yeah, it, exactly. Yeah, she's she's yeah she's Thingamabob, but they, her nickname is Mabob. So okay. yeah, she just she's kind of a collector. She she collects all sorts of useless junk, and she also collected Knox. So uh -huh. so yeah, she's kind of uh yeah she kind of goes around and you know she's a bit of a hoarder. She's like a underground cat lady. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, also, when, mm -hmm. um, so the keystone at the end, the keystone mm -hmm. like flies. So, is, does the keystone have like any other like powers that aren't to seal the night door? Because like like I don't know. Keystone we'll keystone is like flying around. So it does fly out because it flew to that big sigil, right? Yeah. 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 So yeah, that that's a big part of the second book. So you'll, you'll find out some of that stuff in the second book. 
Nice. Nice. I like that. Yeah. Just, um, what was exactly your inspiration? Like, like, has one of your family members died and that's where you got the, his dad never came back or, like? Well, no, it wasn't, that wasn't it. I think that's, it's kind of, you know, in kids literature, it's kind of a thing where the parents disappear, right? You know, in all these books, the kids kind of go off on a crazy adventure. And I wanted to have him looking for something and for him to go after his father. I thought that was really cool. And and then for inspiration, I I always like the books where people go, uh, where, where characters go someplace fantastic, you know, like Alice in Wonderland or The Wizard of Oz. So this was kind of that, you know, but with a little bit more of a kind of a little bit more of a adventure story flair to it, you know, because I loved adventure. I love things like the Indiana Jones movies and, and those type of things. So I was kind of trying to a lot of my work. I try to ma I take, take a lot of stuff that I like. I try to mash it together. You know, <laughs> I go like, oh, I like this. I like this. And I like this, and I'm just going to put it together and see what happens. So, good question. Yeah. That, was, that was actually a really good question, too. Very, very thoughtful. You had a, a question here? Um, yeah. Oh, I think I had your hand yeah. oh, Okay. All right. Anybody else? Back row? No? We're all going all to be quiet back there. All right. That's cool. Um, well, that was a short question and answer period, guys. Uh, I guess that means they liked it because because they didn't have a lot of questions about the book. Sometimes uh, that that's where it is. The questions are like, I didn't understand this part. Um, there's another thing that you do, which is that that you you at least at some point were a political cartoonist. I yeah. I, I read, yeah. and I'm I'm For 25 very years. yeah 25 years yeah. So I'm 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 super interested in. What is the difference in your mind between that kind of political cartooning and doing a book like this? I know that's a really big question, but you're one of the few people I've spoken to who can actually answer it. Yeah, I mean, political cartoons is, is basically taking a big idea, right? You take a big idea and you put it in one image, okay? And whereas a comic is you're taking a big idea and you have multiple pages to tell your story. Yeah. So that's part of it. Um, you know, there's a real political cartoons should have a point to them, right? They should have, they should have some kind of your, some kind of opinion and uh, a good story should have some kind of theme at least, if not an opinion, but it should have something, you know, it should have some there, there. Yeah. So, so yeah. that's, I mean, that's how I approach it. I've always liked, I've always liked long form narratives. So after 25 years of drawing political cartoons, it was really kind of nice to start flexing my, my muscles and, and drawing something a little bit, you know, a little bigger, you know, yeah. I really enjoyed, I really enjoy, I, I, I've loved it. I mean, as a political cartoonist, people used to call me or write me or email me and, and tell me how much my work stunk and how they didn't like me. And they thought my, my cartoon was bad. And the first time I did a first time I did a kids book, you know, the kids would come up and tell me how much they loved my work, how much they loved the book, and I could see the book they'd hand me would be all dog-eared, and I was like, "Oh, this is it. <laughs> this is the, why I've been wasting my time all these years." I, I, I love that. I, I genuinely love that that difference between how the audiences are reacting. That that's that's yeah. it, you use the word muscle, and I and I. That was one of the things that I want to get to because I always feel like doing anything creative is is just like exercising a muscle, just like lifting weights. Just you're doing it with your brain, right? Um, yeah. But it seems to me that the muscles are very, very, very different in drawing a single illustration, which you kind of have to nail because it stands alone, versus mm -hmm. doing a story where it's panel to panel continuity and you're trying to move that story further. And also the political cartooning is a lot, it strikes me about the caricature, I guess, yeah. you know, um, rather than the cartooning. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's it exactly. I mean, you know, you don't have to, in a comic, every panel does not have to be a work of art. 
you know, and and we'll even like and even with uh, political cartoons. The nice thing about political cartoons is that, you know, at least when I was doing it, I was doing one a day. So if if I did one one day and it wasn't that great, it's okay. The next day, it would be, you know, we had, you know, I had another chance to to do it again. So I mean, and I could do the best cartoon I've ever done, but the next day is a new cartoon. And it's something else. So I mean, it really kind of kept you humble, you know. Like I could do like a terrible cartoon, but the next day I could do a great cartoon. It was kind of like being a baseball player, you know. Sometimes you strike out, sometimes you hit a home run, sometimes you just get on base. So yeah, yeah that's an interesting analogy. It's an interesting yeah. analogy. Um, uh, what was I going to ask next? Oh, uh, you you're also involved in in a new publisher, Ahoy Comics. Yeah. Um, I'm, though this is not kid oriented, sorry, uh, I am super curious as how, as how that came about. Yeah, it was just, uh, you know, a good, two good friends of mine, uh, Tom Pyre and Hart Seeley. We were, they live here in Syracuse and we've always been interested in comics and Tom worked for Vertigo for a time and DC Comics and Marvel for quite a while. And, you know. And we were just kind of sitting around. It was like, wouldn't it be cool to to start doing comics, to do a, to start publishing comics? And then we, as the ball got rolling, it you know it became more and more real. And you know, we just everybody kind of knows somebody, well, at least Tom and I do, in the industry. So you know, and it was great. We just you know, and we've been ex- super excited by how people have reacted to the books. I mean, it's it's that's surprised us. I mean, we didn't you know. The climate for comics is not, especially new publishers, is not terrific. But you know, the outpouring of support that we've gotten has has really made us, you know, it's, it feels great. So, and yeah. I think we produce some nice books too. So, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, particularly, I love uh, the Wrong Earth. I think that's a that's a yeah, really really great. funny uh, yeah. uh, book. It's uh, the premise of this comic is kind of uh, what if Batman from the old 1960s television show came into Batman's world today. Oh. And then the you know, and then that grim Batman went into the happy world. It's a it's a really interesting, uh, fun comic. Um, uh, it's it's gotta be kind of scary starting a new publishing venture though. Especially as you said that the market right the climate for new publishers is not exactly uh, open arms. Um, no. no, but you know it's I also, I think we felt that we were trying to do something that people, a lot of people weren't. We were trying to make fun, some some humorous books. I think we had all kind of read these books, and, and there's a lot of them out there. They're just kind of depressing, you know. Yeah. And I thought, I think especially with the current climate, it's nice to maybe have we'll put the escape back into comics, you know, being able to get away and have some fun with them a little bit, you know. I mean, that's what I think we all remember is just a really great comic that kind of swept you up and took you away. And, you know, and that's why I try to do what I treat, do my kids' books is that I try to, I write it for the kid who had a really bad day, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it just, uh, you know, can transport you. That's what good literature does, I think. Yeah, yeah. You guys would agree with that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Were you, you were transported by this book? Yes. Yeah. So what was what were the what were the parts what what did you like the best about the book? Anybody? Yeah. I liked the cat. Yeah, the cat, yeah. Oh, if Alexander he'll be back in book two. Nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um I liked the like the hook on page um whatever. It was like kind of like a hook for me. Um that one caption where it said that was the last time I saw my dad on page seven. That was yeah. one of my favorite parts that really got me into the book. And then also, oh, thank you. And then also, um, I just like um, the ha- uh, hamster scuttlebutt, just like in mm-hmm. all of the parts. So I thought he was pretty funny. So. Yeah, the hamster is my favorite part too. I think. Yeah. I always like a good piece of cartooning, and that's just a good cartoon idea. Oh. Um, yeah. There's something funny about the hamster and the hamster ball, right? I mean, yeah. it just, and that it could be the MacGuffin too. And the, you know, I, I had a lot of, when when I came up with the idea, I was like, oh, that's gonna be fun. So, mm-hmm. 
So when you're conceiving a book like this, what, does the title, like in this case, I told you I love the title. It just rolls off the tongue, Edison Beaker Creature Seeker. Did, did that title come first? Did the title come after you started conceiving the book? Um, I played around, I had, I had Creature Seeker, but I thought about, um, but I like the names like a, a buddy of mine who writes children's books is named Bruce Koval, and he has a book out called Jeremy Thatcher Dragon Hatcher. And I was so I just I was literally trying like, oh, I want to do one like that. <laughs> so I had to come up with a with a good name for for the main character. So but I had Creature Seeker for a long time. The Creature Seekers it was going to be called, but then I thought, you know, if I can come up with a you know, kind of a rhyming name, it would be fun. So that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. You I also remember. Yeah, it is. It is very much so. You also, you do your own coloring. Um, I do. And, uh, and I, I read, I actually read the book in black and white originally because that's, that's how I, mm -hmm. as a retailer, they send us black and white copies of these things. Um, <clears throat> what, what informs your color choices? Why, why so much purple or pink or green? Like what, what, how do you approach each page? Well, I wanted, because a lot of this book takes place in underground or the, in the underwear, I didn't want it to be brown. I didn't want it to be like, I didn't want it to be like a lot of, you know, like, like in caves and things like that. It just, it would, would be brown or black and I wanted it to be anything but. So that's why I came up with all these colors. And I like to have my colors be part of the story and that they're part of the scene change. So when the scene changes, the colors change. Mm -hmm. So it's a little just helping the story tell, help, helping the storytelling, you know, just so you know, it's a different color, it's someplace else. You know, we go back and it's, it's if it's that color, it's happening in the same place. So that's really what it is. It's just kind of, it's almost like a color key for me for the storytelling. Yeah. Makes sense to me. Uh, yeah, I picked some pretty bright colors. But it just, it's, it was me testing the waters too. I mean, I, I don't feel that I'm the strongest colorist in the world. So I just really wanted to kind of have some fun and see what I could do. Yeah, no, I very much like the brightness. I, I, I very much like it. Um, uh, even though, as you say, it's, it's in the underwear. Yeah. <laughs> in the under. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Um, yeah, I love. I mean, I love this book. I, you guys, I, you must have another question for me. I can't keep doing all the talking. Yeah. So, did the dad, did he like die, or did he get stuck in the darkness? Because the whistle when Edison was in the darkness, like, did he die, or did he just get like stuck in the darkness or stuck in the? Underwear? What do you think? What do you think? He just got stuck in the underwear and the darkness. Okay. That's what happens. Well, we'll see. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't think I would have. I would say the present, the odds are that he's not dead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if if I have anything to say, we will figure it out, and uh, yes. and there will be a conclusion. Okay. Yeah. I can't tell you anything more. Now you said you said that you have um, you know what the end of the story is in this case that you actually have an ending for the story. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Do you know how you get there yet? Or is that the, I haven't figured it out? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, you know, you kind of know where you want to go, but how I'm going to get there is, I'm going to leave it up to a little bit of serendipity to get us there. So, you know, it makes it easy. It makes it not easier, but it makes it, makes the storytelling more fun for me as a writer. And I mean, I, I think there are people who do know the whole thing, but I, you know, I know that uh, Jeff Smith, when he did Bone, he knew where he wanted to end it. He just didn't know how he was going to get there. And I think a lot of people are like that. Yeah. 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 It, that's not that's not um, uh, scary for you as you start a new book to, I don't know, like, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. It's completely scary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's all it's also part of the fun. Right. You know, it's just I can do whatever I want, and it's but it's a game too. I mean, like I'm putting in pieces of the puzzle into the book, and it'd be kind of cheating if I come up with some answer that that wasn't kind of hinted at. 
Yeah. So, you know, so it's me kind of putting the puzzle together of the story too as we go along. So. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Um, but if you guys understand that, that's a thing. Yeah. When you, Alexander says that uh, if something or someone has one eye, then it is consumed by the darkness. Why don't, like, Maba and um, uh, and the Baron's goons have one eye. Why do they have two? They have. They have somehow managed to stay away from the underlings and and not be uh, and not be absorbed. So I mean, you know, uh, Baron Umbra controls the underlings, so he's probably keeping the he's keeping the goons free. And Mabob is, you know, she rarely leaves her house, so. You know, and it's not like he's on a, at this point, it's not like Baron Umbra is on a conquest. They're really just kind of like his minions that he's controlling. So, you know, they really only get you if they, if they want something from you. So. Nice. Um, you, uh, when you when you start when you start doing the book like physically doing the book are you doing layouts um, or are you just drawing straight since you're doing digitally and you can just erase it easily what's what's your what's your process for doing for doing a page um, I can do you have like do I have that thing where I can kind of show you the... there there is screen share so if you move your mouse uh, there's there's a there's a green arrow. So there's a there's a green television screen with a white arrow on it in the corner, like uh -huh. the second from the top on the sidebar. Where is it? I don't see it. Oh, there yeah. it is. Yep, I see. Uh huh. It might be different for you. Okay. Oh, let me see. Yeah. Right. All right. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. so then, if you, it might be on the top. Jordan says. Yeah, I see so it. then, yeah. if you click that, then that's screen share, and then you can determine what we're seeing. Um, right. right now, we're seeing you your camera. Of, yeah. I'll run through kind of what I how I do this a little bit. So. You could even live draw if you wanted to. Okay. So now there, there you go. So that has the, you know, that has the script and he has the little drawings and you can kind of see all the all the little doodles and things like that. So I'm working out the story at this point. So after I write the whole story, I'll write the entire story and then I do thumbnails or sort of the breakdowns and I'll literally draw out, kind of create these little thumbnails and it's really, they're really like shorthand versions of the story, you know, it's some, it's not really, you guys can't really tell what's going on, but I can kind of figure it out. It's just really a lot of shapes. So I'm literally taking the story from words and I'm breaking it down into pictures. So, and I'm putting on, this happens on this page, this happens on this page, this happens on this page. So then I'll break down the entire book. You know, the next step, is pencils and then i'll just pencil the entire book you know and each time i do this it gives me a chance to see what's happening to kind of fix any mistakes and you know to really kind of um you know edit the process like a lot of times i'll leave a page or two blank if i haven't figured it out like i'll know something has to happen on this page or i know what has to happen i just don't know how it's going to happen so i'll leave that blank and come back and fix it maybe in the next stage. So this is pencils. The next stage is inks. And at this point, the book is almost done. You know, you can see that you could kind of publish something like this if it was a black and white book. And then after that becomes preliminary color and then secondary color. So, and that's really, that's really kind of how I do that. So, so I'm back. Can, can, you, can you talk a little bit about the difference between the primary color and the secondary color? Yeah, it's uh, Cause I think that's a thing that, that like nobody here really knows anything about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it's like, it's, I use a program called Photoshop to color. So what I'm really doing is I'm creating layers. So it's really like almost like an animated feature where you'll have like the first layer, and the, like the front would be on the top layer and then the background would be on the 
the back layer and you know it's like that so that's what i'm really doing as i'm setting down the main colors as they will appear on the page so kind of front to back so characters are always usually in the front and backgrounds are in the back and then there's effects and maybe the line work and things like that so and and why specifically is it done that way i guess is the question it doesn't have to be done that way i mean you could uh you, you could just kind of color the whole thing but if but if you make a mistake or you know you want to change stuff around it's easy to kind of com compartmentalize it so if like say you know say you want to change the backgrounds or you know or you or you go outside the lines <laughs> with a, you know, when it's on layers, you can just kind of erase and not erase the background too. If you, like if I'm coloring your shirt and all of a sudden I'm coloring it and all of a sudden it goes over the lines and I end up, you know, I end up covering color, covering the, uh, the bookcase. I'm like, oh, I can, you know, if you're on the same layer, I've got to go back and fix all those comics and stuff. But if you're on a different layer, I can just erase that part that went over and, it's, and that's how it is. So it's easier to edit, easier to change colors, easier to, all around to just put it on layers yeah the, the 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 two different color pieces that you showed us though i mean it looked like there were effects that were being added to the to yeah, color exactly. yeah the, they were molding them i guess to sure sure yeah there's different effects there's different just more details okay you know the, fir the first layer of color is really what's called flatting mm -hmm. and they just put in a lot of flat colors and and that just kind of gets you to the point of seeing how these things are going to stack and then and then once you like that you can start changing stuff with with the other layers so is this is this somewhat akin to the difference between penciling and inking they're both the lines on the paper but one is looser and the other is more specific is that a good analogy Maybe it's probably just like the beginning. I would say it's just the beginning stages of color. Really, that's all it is. Okay. And usually, I'm flatting. I'm usually flatting the pages as I'm coloring them too. I'm not. You know, sometimes I'll have someone help and flat a bunch of pages for me. So, you know, it just it just kind of shows you the way. I, the reason why I show that is just kind of show you the steps that it takes. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do any of you guys have any questions about? like how the comics are made or or any of the stuff that we were just seeing or no do you guys like to draw do you guys like to draw yeah yeah oh okay. yeah. Well, yeah if you like to draw just you gotta draw all the time you gotta keep a sketchbook i i'm always keeping sketchbooks i've got a ton of them and this is always i don't know if you can see it i'm always up oh, to spoiler alert um this is some sketches for the book too that are coming out. So nice. But you can see, yeah. I mean, it's so I'm always sketching. I'm always sketching in the, you know, on my Cintiq and everything. Do you want to? Let me show you some pages. I've got some pages. Yeah, let's. We'd love to see some pages. Yeah. 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 Okay. Hold on. Let's see if I can do this thing again. Yep. All right. Uh, uh oh. Where am I? Here we go. Hold on. We're all good. We're all good. Uh, how come I can't do? Hold on. It's not a problem. No, I just have too much going on here. <laughs> so. So your your pencils, uh, so we can keep talking while you're looking. Yeah. Um, your pencils look very much like what I would consider traditional pencils on on paper. Yeah. How, it, it, I'm not really used to that seeing that digitally because the line's so clean digitally. Is there a special uh, tool or something you're using to 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 get that effect? Yeah, I'm using a. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I'm using a, I use a program called Manga Studio. Okay. And it's a, uh, oh, it used to be Manga Studio. Now it's a, uh, here we go. So, okay, so this is, what you're seeing now is Manga Studio. 
And this is kind of the desktop. And this is book two. What you're looking at is literally book two in pencil form. Cool. So, so I will. Uh, is that that's the whole thing? All hundred and sixty pages? Yeah. Well, it's, right now, it's yeah, it's over that. So nice. So yeah, so this is it. So you can really, I can zoom in on it. Yeah. Let's see if I can. So that's page one. Let me hold on. Uh, did you see? Did you catch the name of the next book? Yeah, the Lost. City. The Lost City. I know. Shh. Spoiler alert. So yeah, so that's. Uh, so it's called the Lost City, and I'm reloading the pages here. Hold on. I'll do a little bit of drawing. So what I have is I have this. Um, what you're seeing is 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 the Cintiq, and it's like a digital drafting table. So let me go and I'll show you how. I'll zoom in on a page. Okay, so here's a page. It's blank. Hmm? It's blank. It's blank. Yeah, but I'll start drawing. So let me draw. Let me. Oh, wow. So here's Edison. That's cool. Whoa. How do you do that? He's drawing. Well, I'm, yeah. You, you draw it long enough and you, <laughs> you kind of get good at these things. Yeah. You draw a character on 160 pages. You kind of know how he looks, you know? So. Kind of like magic, right? Yeah. 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 So this is a great program, and I can also, you know, do like another layer, and I can ink it, you know, so I can go. That took only like twenty seconds. Just the oh wow. Yeah, you go so fast. Yeah, I do, I do go fast. Um, that's, that's really yeah. Yes, so that's kind of how I do it. I mean, it just it's you know, and what's nice about this program too is you can, I can do this. This is this is the, my favorite part. Like I can go like this and go, oh look, it creates it creates the creates the panels for me. I can go boom, <laughs> boom. Oh wow. Boom. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Right. What, what used to take me, what used to take me like, you know, 20 minutes to rule out just took me like less than 20 seconds. So you don't, you don't miss the, uh, the, the hand drawn quality of the, uh, the imprint order though. No, not at all. I was, you know, <laughs> if you, if you look at some of those, if you look at some of those, um, ooh, I gotta get off that. Program. If you look at some of those pages from, uh, from nights, <laughs> they're like this. <laughs> they're just, you know, I've got such a, I'm just lousy at uh, at ruling out stuff, right? I mean, my art director said to me, do you want me to line up the tops or the bottoms? Because neither is straight. <laughs> so, so this helps me quite a bit. I also assume your um, your lettering is, is computer at this point as well. Now. Yeah, at the font now. Is that is that a font based on your hands your handwriting? Uh, Salem Hyde was. This was one that I ha had seen. And I think a lot of people are using it. I know. I think Jed Winnick is using this font, and I think uh, Scotty Young uses this font. So um, I think I'm in good company with that. So. Very much. But so. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of got a real kind of humorous type of feel. I think it almost looks like a Calvin and Hobbes type of font. So, so here's a. Here's Scuttlebutt. It was hard. Scuttlebutt was hard for me to design because, you know, because he's a big, kind of a fat little character. So, you know, so it's kind of hard to get, you know, a lot of reaction out of him. He's just kind of roly poly. So. so it's all on the face at that point, right? It is on the face, yeah. So, so yeah, so there's that. Um, 
you guys want to see me draw anybody? Anybody have have any have, have any requests? Any requests? Go ahead. Yeah. Do you mind drawing the protagonist in book two or no? Is that giving it away too much? The antagonist. Er, antagonist. Antagonist? Oh, it's, it's, it's the same guy. The bad it's, guy. It's, uh, I don't know which one it is. Yeah. It's, it's the same bad guy. Yeah. Okay. It's fair enough. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 the protagonist, just so you know, is, is who the hero is. Yeah. Pro, like positive. And ant, as an ante, is the antagonist. Language is cool too. Sorry. Oh, mm -hmm. oh yeah. Nice. He does get a bit of a costume change in this one. So. Oh, wow. Well, he's. he's there he is. That's, it's part of the skill. He just, he just draws. You've got a. a we, we're. Because we're seeing your screen. You've got a pad, I'm assuming. Yeah, that you're drawing yeah, onto? It's, it's like a big, uh, yeah, it's like a big iPad. Think of it like a big iPad. And except it's probably about four times the size of an iPad. And it's, and I get, I can draw right on it with like a, an eye pencil, but it's, they're called Cintiq. It's a Wacom. And uh, it's great. It's just like drawing on paper and pencil. So. It's Tesla. Nice. Tesla. Tesla. Yeah, it is fun to watch. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see where he's drawing. Yeah. No, now I can see. Now I know where he's drawing. I can see. Okay. Yeah. Now it's just a bunch of them. Not there it is. Well, do you notice I always start like, I always kind of start with a shape. Yeah, you know? I can see them. Yeah. They start with a shape and I'm, I'm kind of figuring it out. Like what is the, <laughs> where are the lines? Where's the face? You know, where are the, the where am I putting the eyes? Who's that? Where's the nose go? You know. Who's that? This will be Scuttlebutt again. So it's a, just a bigger version of Scuttlebutt. Jennifer <laughs> Scuttlebutt. Yeah, and it's very much all in the face at that point. Yeah, exactly. So, but that's you know, that's really it. You know, it's who else is there? Oh, the Bob. Oh. Let's see, what? that's fantastic. Something like that. It's been a while since I've drawn her. So, anyways. So, awesome. That's great. Where's where where? Oh, put the, put the camera back on him for a second. Where's where's the Cintiq? Show it. Can you can you show us the? Can I show it? Can you show what it looks or like. Show where your. Oh, it's literally on your. It's literally. Oh, it's right there. Okay, I see. Right there. It's Neat. literally right next to me. Neat. Okay, and you have a stylus that you draw with, yeah? Mm -hmm. It looks like this. Perfect. Okay. Yep. Yeah. 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 Technology, super cool. I know. I know. Oh, it saves my. It saves me. I don't think I'd be able to get the book done as fast if, if not for those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, any last questions, guys? Yeah. No. No. You got it. Okay. So, um. I want to thank you, Frank, uh, for, for, for doing this. Um, Jordan, put it back on me, man. Um, sorry. Uh, uh, we're not getting a good shot of here because of light. Okay. All right. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Uh, it's, uh, it's an excellent book, though, right? I mean, look, we have. You guys are looking forward to the next one, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Do we do we know Frank when volume two is it scheduled? Do we know? I don't know. I think next year. Okay. <laughs> next year. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Are you like for the length that they run? Are you trying to do one a year? Is that the plan? 
yeah, it's it's pretty breakneck. So it's uh, you know, but yeah, that's about that's what I'm trying. That's what I'm shooting for. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, we, you know, we, like as I said, we love this here at the club. We would love to see more. Uh, uh, we'd love to see more of anything that you do. So thank really, you. thank you for coming out and talking to us today. I, I really appreciate it. Um, next month's book, guys, which you can pick up today if you like, is Norway uh, by Pat Seaton. Um, really, really, really beautiful book. Uh, it's it's a myth. It's a um, it's an myth that they did uh kit seaton the artist is going to be here live and in person on sunday the 16th so two weeks from today um mm -hmm. frank a little late that's that's why they're they're so close together but in two weeks okay. we will meet back here again and do this again with kit seaton live and in person and not only do we have uh the book she made she made these awesome metal pins for you guys they're really really cool they're like way better than the pins we usually do. So um, you can pick those up today. Um, once again, Frank, thank you very much for coming out and joining us today, uh, being part of this. Um, we really, really appreciate it. Well, thank you, Brian. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah. This has been, <laughs> the, uh, this has been the Graphic Novel Month Club. Yeah, yeah. Applaud <laughs> us out. We'll see thank you guys you. next month.